Hello everyone. Today we will dive into a very interesting topic, building a mobile application targeting iOS devices using Swift, Swift UI and Combine, but also, and that's the interesting part, using Oracle's new cloud autonomous database as a backend. Um, well, some Swift and Swift UI uh, knowledge is required, uh, not so much uh, Oracle autonomous database knowledge, uh, but let's dive in into Xcode and start coding. We will retrieve from cloud, from our autonomous database, a list of JSON documents, and we will just uh, show the resulting orders in our uh, very simple uh, view. So let's see how it works. We start the application and we see very quickly the list being populated by our uh, fruit orders. If we click here on the refresh button, the operation is done again. So let's see how this is done in code. We're in Swift UI now, so we have a view with a data store, an object that is storing all things related to our orders. So this is basically the abstraction behind uh, our application. In the background, we'll see this object is responsible for retrieving the JSON files from the autonomous database on the cloud. So what's here? We have our list. This is the basic component here, a list that is iterating through the fruits uh, array in the data store. And we'll see later how this is done. And then for each fruit is basically displaying a row with information. This row is obviously a view and is constructed here in this function. Uh, basically, we receive a fruit object and then we create text label for each relevant uh, property of the object. If we have a color, then we display the color. If we don't have one, because the JSON object is just not containing that uh, item, then we say colorless. And that's it. That's the main view of the application. Simple, right? So basically, this is our view model. Uh, it's a Swift UI slash combine observable object, which has properties that are uh, supposed to change and the Swift UI views to be notified when this is happening. So we have those two published properties. One is the list of fruits with uh, an array containing an array of, uh, well, fruit objects contained into uh, wrapper objects, and we'll see that uh, later. And of course, the very basic is loading a flag that is telling us if an operation is already in progress or not. We want to show that in the UI, and also we want uh, here to avoid doing uh, parallel op operations. It's not a problem per se, but we just want to keep things simple for this uh, discussion. Let's see where the fruits array is being populated and everything is happening here in this uh, method. The core of it is this method invocation here. Uh, so our documents method is uh, basically doing one simple thing. It's uh, retrieving each and every uh, document uh, row from uh, our uh, database for a specified collection. Think of collections as tables in a relational database. So in our case, uh, all our uh, data is stored in the collection named fruit. This is a Swift combined publisher that is being returned here. So it will emit a new value each time one is retrieved from the server. But let's see exactly what this value is and what is being emitted here. So we have two structure that are modeling the response of the server. So the first one is the item, which is encapsulating our model object. Of course, we have our, our object, as I said, but we also have some um, other meta information that is returned by the server, the unique ID of the, of the object, the e tag, basically saying what's the version of, uh, of the document that's being returned, and of course, some uh, 
useful information about when the, the object was last modified on the server and when it was created. The items are grouped in the collection object. So we have, of course, our items array, but also other, again, meta information, which is uh, useful for further processing, like the has more flag, which is telling us if there are more pages that could be retrieved from the server. Because in case of a large number of objects that are stored in our database, the response will be paged. So if we want to retrieve them all, we need to iterate through the through the pages and we'll see how this is done in the in the documents function. But before going there, let's see our model. So this is the structure, the object that is uh, being encapsulated in the item and then in the collection uh, objects uh, we've seen before. So this is very simple, really. We have the name of the fruit, the count, the number of objects that are ordered, let's say, and then optionally the color of the fruit. This could uh, be there or not, depending on the, on the data that's stored on the database. So going back to the to the documents uh, function, we um, we get the the name of the collection and the page size if we want to specify it. If not, the default value is zero, meaning the default value that's set on the server will uh, will uh, prevail. Of course, we start by creating the address of the request we send to the server we basically concatenate to the endpoint the name of the collection. That's the API that's used to, to retrieve all the documents in the collection. And optionally, the, the limit, the page size, if we have one uh, set in, uh, in our uh, method invocation. And then we create a combined publisher with the request and we send the the request uh, to a small you will see a very small utility function that is uh, doing and we have it here that is doing one thing it sends the the request to the server and when we have something back we decode it from uh, json to a swift object if possible if not it will uh, return an error and then we um, send the, the response downstream encapsulated in uh, a small uh, structure that is containing our value and the original response because we may want to do some debugging, let's say uh, downstream if something is going wrong. So our uh, agent run utility method is sending back response objects each time one is successfully retrieved from the server and decoded from, uh, from JSON to a Swift uh, object. It does one more thing though. Each time we retrieve a value, we check if there are more pages, if the has more flag is set. If this is true, then we need to retrieve the next page in a new request uh, sent to the server. So basically we create a new request setting explicitly the offset, the page that should be retrieved from the server. And then the, this request is sent again through the, same, uh, through the same flow. And that's it. When we get back here, we see each time a new page is coming, the resulting object is emitted through this, uh, through this chain. So what's going to be emitted? A collection object. We only want the items in, uh, in our view model. So we filter out the items. We make sure that we are on the main queue because uh, that's a, some sort of a hard rule in Swift and Swift UI. If we want to modify the display, we need to be on the main queue. So this is uh, just doing that. And then we uh, process the response. First, well, here we have two blocks of code. The first one is invoked here when the publisher is just 
finished, when everything is done and the, uh, the publisher is signaling that the, the processing is finished. So in this case, we just want to set the is loading flag to false in order to show the, the result of the operation in the UI. And then the second block of code is invoked each time a new value is emitted by the publisher. So each time a new page is retrieved, processed and sent through this, uh, through this chain. So we receive here a fruit payload uh, encapsulated in the items in, in the item uh, in the item uh, structure and we just add that uh, or append that to our fruits array so each time this is happening the published value will fire an event informing our uh, view here that something new happened with the data and the ui will uh, just uh, refresh. So everything I've described above is uh, happening when I press this refresh button here in the UI. So basically this button. So we invoke the data store retrieve all fruits method. And when we do that, we go to the server, we go through all those uh, combined publishers and we get our response back. So that's it. That's very simple. Of course, the application is uh, trivial, but a lot of other things could be done uh, using basically the same framework and the same uh, methods.